la la, sha la le la, de da da da. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Wabe tell one gang my yami. Es pamba nwe ni se thazo. Inga kongi. tonight in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
There's another song in my spirit. We're going to do another one before we get to the word of God. And I just want you to prepare yourself, prepare your spirit, prepare your heart. Prepare your mind for what God is getting ready to do in your life tonight in the name of Jesus. One thing that I know is that no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing in your life, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask for. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, give me that tent. Give me that tent. Give me that tent. I, 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 I just feel so blessed and I feel like I'm in church whenever I hear that tent. Oh, Jesus. Give me that tent. Give me that tent. Give me that tent. Me that tent. Mm. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm. He's been faithful to me. He's been wonderful. Oh, how I love him. He's been good to me. He's been wonderful. Oh, how I love him. He's been faithful to me. He's been wonderful. Oh, how I love you. Oh, he's been faithful to me, and he's been wonderful. Oh, how I love you. My scars tell a story. Oh, that tell the story the power of a soldier is not seen in his handsome face or his perfect hands or whatever but we get to know a soldier by the amount of scars oh my God thank you Jesus thank you Father let me welcome you once again if you are joining us via YouTube Kindly subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the channel. And if you're joining us via Facebook platform, kindly follow my page as J Israel Senior. Follow that page. Follow me on Instagram as J Israel Official and on YouTube as J Israel Official. I only have one YouTube account. As you all know that my previous YouTube account was taken down because of the amount of truth that they couldn't handle and they couldn't take in, they decided to take it down. As you all know that the truth offends a liar and there is no way a truthful person can be offended uh, when we are exposing a lie. And I want you to know, it's not just about exposing a lie, but you can never say the truth without leaving a lie exposed. So it is the truth that automatically exposes a lie. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right here. So. Uh, uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel 
uh, 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 follow me on Facebook, uh, follow me on Instagram. It's J Israel Official, J Israel Senior. Oh my God, oh my God. I'm bringing you the gospel from the comfort of the lounge. Today, I'm ministering from the lounge and I know that this day, after today, your life will never be the same again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to shoot straight to the word of God. We're going to shoot straight to the word of God as I do not want to waste so much time. I feel the anointing of God already. I feel the power of God in this place and I want you to know that wherever you are, the Lord is getting ready to do something new in your life. As we are going to the word, just play it soft and just play it soft, just play it soft as we are going to the word and um, you just flow with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I'm going to take my reading from the book of uh, Galatians chapter 1. I'm going to take my, my reading from the book of Galatians chapter 1. I think now you can give me the preaching sound. Galatians chapter 1. And I'm going to read from verse number 6 going down to verse number 9. The Bible says, I am astonished. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and tending to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion. Just give me a little bit of it. Just a small effect and just raise me up a little bit. Okay. Uh, it mustn't be much. Just a little bit. You know, the, I'm trying to be as, uh, you know, as free as I can because in as much as I'm reaching you from the lounge, I know that you are also watching me from the lounge and um, wherever you're watching from, just turn it down a bit. Just want it very far. I, I think you can you can keep me on that tent and let's let's just preach on it yeah let's preach on the tent yeah let's, let's just preach on that tent yeah we just play it nice and there it has a beautiful melody okay I'm going to take it again Galatians chapter one uh, just turn down the effect just put it on half minus half if possible the Bible says I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and attending to a different gospel which is really no gospel at all evidently some people are throwing you into confusion oh my god evidently some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. The one that blesses me the most is verse number 7b. And it says, evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as I was going through the scriptures and trying to understand the meaning of perverting the gospel, I, I, I just had to go through the dictionary and try and understand what does the word pervert really means. I came across so many different uh, uh, meanings, but I'm going to share with you a few. Number one. The word pervert means to distort. Oh my God. The word pervert means to distort or to corrupt the truth. So there is the truth and there is the distorted truth. There is the gospel and there is the perverted gospel, which is the distorted and the corrupted gospel. Oh my God. Now when we begin to go through the word of God and try to understand, the other meaning that I also came across is that... Uh, 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 perverting simply means to lead away from what is considered natural or acceptable. So we have what is called the acceptable gospel and the unacceptable gospel. Oh my God, I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right here. I'm going to read again Matthew chapter number 24. I'm going to read again Matthew chapter number 24. 
the Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. <laughs> and the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then the end shall come. And then this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the ends of the world and then the end shall come. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I'm going to read one last verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse number 4. The Bible says, uh, For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus... Now, in Galatians, the Bible says, if somebody comes to you and preaches a different gospel, but in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the Bible does not talk about the gospel, but now the Bible talks about Jesus. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' mighty name as we are going down with the scriptures. I want you to understand a few things about today that whatever that I'm bringing to you, it is nothing but the gospel of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. I am bringing to you nothing but the gospel. I'm bringing to you nothing but the gospel. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 24 what we just read, and now this gospel shall be preached and now the key word I want you to understand right there is this gospel. Oh my God, I feel like preaching to somebody right now. Now the key word I want you to understand and the key word that I want you to uh, put into consideration is the word that says, and now this gospel. Meaning to say there is a particular gospel that is supposed to be ministered to all the ends of the world so that the end may come. Now, I want you to understand that when the coronavirus came, there are so many theories that came up. Many people came with uh, so many different theories and talking about this and talking about that. Some say that the COVID-19 is the triple six. Some say the COVID-19 is the arrival of the Antichrist. And some thought the COVID-19 is bringing the end to the world. But I want you to understand that there is nothing as useless as the COVID-19 that can bring about the end of the world. The end of the world can never be brought about by the COVID-19. But the Bible says the preaching of the gospel is the one that shall determine whether the end is about to come or not. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right there. Now there are so many people who came up with theories and they said they are getting ready to put a chip in your body. There are so many pastors on the internet who were all over. Some were saying no, don't take the vaccine. Some were saying take the vaccine. Some were saying the vaccine is the antichrist the vaccine is the the vaccine is the triple six the vaccine is the antichrist maybe for the very first time let me just try and address one or two issues right there when we talk about the antichrist we are talking about uh, anti there are two words that are combined together there is the word anti and then there is the word Christ so antichrist is anything that does not believe in the existence of deity called Christ so if anything does not believe in the existence of Christ is anti-Christ. So the COVID-19 or the vaccine or whatever, it is not really the antichrist that you think it is. We are already living amongst the antichrist. There are people who do not preach the gospel and they preach a different gospel. Those are the antichrist. We can try and come up with theories about COVID-19. We can come up with theories about uh, the vaccine and triple six antichrist. But I'm telling you now that an antichrist is anything that does not believe in the existence of Jesus Christ. So anybody who does not preach the gospel of Jesus Christ is antichrist. Anybody who does not believe in the power and uh, in the existence of the power of Jesus Christ is Antichrist. So what do I mean when I say anybody who does not believe in the existence of Jesus is Antichrist? Anybody who denies the existence of the power of God is Antichrist. Anybody who denies the existence of the power of Jesus is Antichrist. How do you deny the existence of the power? By faking a miracle. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I know I'm about to pull a nerve right there, but how do you deny the existence of Jesus? You deny the existence of Jesus by faking what can be real. So by faking what can be real, you are simply denying the existence of the power of God. And by denying the existence of the power of God, you are an antichrist. So any pastor, prophet, apostle, bishop, or anybody who fakes a miracle is denying the existence of the power of Jesus and he's an antichrist. Any prophet who fakes a prophecy, who stages a prophecy, anybody who, 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 who brings actors to come and act as if they are being prophesied or act as if they are sick or act as if they are this and that, that person is denying the existence of the power of God. He is denying the existence of Jesus. He's an antichrist. The Bible in the book of Galatians said, and now, if anybody, even an angel or ourselves, come to you and preach to you any other gospel, that is not this gospel that we are preaching to you. Cursed is that person. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I believe that by the power of the Most High God, you shall receive a new revelation. You shall receive the power of God upon your life and God shall open your eyes to see. For the Bible says in the last days, there shall be false prophets who shall come. Even the elect shall be deceived. I was speaking yesterday and I said, even the elect, when the Bible says the elect shall be deceived, the Bible is simply saying those you think are very anointed, they shall be deceived. Those you think are the most powerful men of God under the sun, they shall be deceived. Those you think are anointed, that is why we have got men of God who used to preach the gospel. Many years ago, they used to preach the gospel until they started merchandising the gospel. By merchandising the gospel, the Bible talks about Jesus walking into the temple. As he's walking into the temple, he finds that uh, there are people who have gathered. Uh, other than praying and singing and worshipping God and praying in the house of the Lord, they have turned the house of God into a place of merchandise. They have turned the house of God into a marketplace. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right here. They have turned the house of the Lord into a marketplace where you find different products are on sale. Every Sunday service, there are products that are on sale. The Bible says Jesus took out a whipping cord and he started whipping them out of the, uh, out of the temple. Why and how is it possible that we have got an altar that is there and people, the Bible says there were money changers who were standing on the altar. If I want to modernize whatever the Bible was saying, I'll begin to bring it into time that the money changers were telling people, give me your currency so that I can give you a different currency. But in our time, it is all about give me your currency and I will give you a miracle. So any other gospel, that is not this gospel. The Bible says, cursed is a man who shall preach that gospel, which is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is why I'm saying Jesus or nothing. Give me Jesus or nothing. 2022, we are not compromising. 2022, we are not turning back. 2022, there is no going back. We are preaching Jesus to all the ends of the world so that the end may come. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. In the year 2000, we had what was called the Y2K compliance where the, everybody all over the world, they were crying and saying, we are in the year 2000, the end is about to come. Let me remind you today that as long as this gospel is not being preached to all the ends of the world, we still have China to give their lives to Christ. We still have America to bring their lives to Christ. We still have people in Egypt. We still have Muslims. We still have different people give their lives to Christ as long as this gospel is not being preached to all the ends of the world the end will not come I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right here but I feel I feel a push and a drive in my spirit when we're talking about the gospel the Bible says it brings me down to my favorite scripture Romans chapter 1 verse number 16 the Bible says and now I'm not ashamed of this gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation if the gospel does not bring us to a place of salvation it is the other gospel if the preaching of this Jesus does not bring us to a place of salvation it is another Jesus not the Jesus who was crucified who died on the cross of Calvary for your sins and my sins to be forgiven 
for there to be a remission of sins I don't know if I'm talking to somebody tonight but I feel a drive and a push in my spirit my spirit groans and my spirit cries out my spirit yearns that may this gospel be preached to all the ends of the world may everybody receive this gospel of truth when we talk about the gospel we sum it up in three different parts the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ it is all about the crucifixion the burial and the resurrection of Jesus everything that has to do with the crucifixion the burial and the resurrection of Jesus that is the gospel put together and summed up into one piece and delivered to the people and delivered to mankind so that there may be salvation to people God sent prophet Moses in the book of Exodus. That is where we begin to hear about deliverance for the very first time. We begin to hear about salvation for the very first time. I'm here to tell you somebody that there is a Jesus who saves. There is a God who saves. There is a God in heaven. We begin to hear about uh, salvation in the book of Exodus. God is trying to bring back mankind back to himself. He sends the man Moses and he said, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses comes and he goes to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, let my people go. The Bible says, after Moses, another one took over. We hear about Aaron. When Moses is up in the mountain, Aaron is busy with the church of God. He has turned the church of God into a circus. He has turned the church of God into a playground. The absence of Moses turned the church into something else. When Moses came down from the mountain, he found that Aaron had already manufactured a golden calf where people are worshipping a golden calf thinking they are worshipping God. We have a kind of Aaron in our time. A kind of Aaron is a pastor, a prophet, an apostle, or a bishop who has introduced another gospel, which is not this gospel. Which is not this gospel. There are some Aarons that we have in our time. Some Aarons we have distorted the gospel. Some Aarons we have, we have introduced the golden calf into the house of the Lord. You might be finding yourself in a building that is written so and so ministries or so and so church of God but you don't know that the Jesus that is being worshipped in that church is not the Jesus who died on the cross on the cross of Calvary. When Moses came down from the mountain he found that they were worshipping a golden calf. He got very angry and he broke the law. The first man to receive the law was the first man to break it because of the anger of seeing what was happening in the house of God. They had turned the house of the Lord into a circus. A house, the house of God. That is why Jesus said, my, my father's house shall be a house of prayer. Not a house of merchandise. Not a house where you come with your products and you come and line them up and looking for money. Are you preaching the gospel because you want to save souls? Or you are preaching the gospel because you want to save your stomach? Are you preaching the gospel because you want to save a soul? Or you are preaching the gospel because you want to take care of your family? I come today to remind you by the instruction of the Holy Ghost and by the instruction of heaven. I heard the voice of the Lord speaking to me and saying to me, Son of man, go and remind them. Remind them that hell exists and heaven is still in existence. Remind them about the existence of heaven and the existence of heaven and the existence of hell. Remind them, remind them that even in our time, it is still fashionable to do the right thing. Even in our time, it is still fashionable. In a time when everybody has turned themselves into a merchandising prophet, into a merchandising pastor, it is still possible to preach the gospel without any expectations whatsoever. I was touched the other day when one man of God was ministering and he was saying Enoch walked with God. He walked with God and he walked with God. He walked with God and he walked with God. But there is something that is so touching in that scripture. When we hear about Enoch walking with God, we do not hear about the car that Enoch was driving. We do not hear about the house that Enoch was staying in. The only thing that we hear about is that Enoch walked with God. We don't hear about the kind of suits that he was wearing. 
Remind them, remind them, remind them, remind them. Remind them that it's not about the suit that makes you to walk with God. It's not about the house that makes you to walk with God. It's not about the car that makes you to walk with God. Remind them that it's not about the money. You can walk with God with an empty account. You can walk with God with a broke, as a broke, as a broke person. You can still walk with God. As broke as you are, you can still walk with God. You can still carry the power of God. Remind them that the gospel is not about money, but it's about saving souls. Remind them that this gospel is about bringing revival to the nations. And not bringing revival to your bank account. And not bringing revival to your garage or revival to your home. I'm here to tell somebody right here. I heard the Lord and the Lord, I heard his voice very clear. Saying, son of man, go and remind them. Remind them that it's not about the positions that they have in their churches. Remind them that with their positions that they possess in their churches, they can still go to hell with those positions. Remind them that with their jackets that they are wearing, covering so much debt and iniquity within their hearts and within their minds, covering them with white garments and white blazers and nice suits and everything. Remind them that it's not about all those things. Hypocrites. It's not about all those things. Remind them that the gospel is not about being close to your pastor. Remind them that you can be close to your men of God because the Bible says on that day there shall be what is called the gnashing of teeth. On that day, when the day shall come, Jesus is not going to look for those who are part of the Back to Christ movement or for those who are part of Jay's Royal Church or those who are part of uh, uh, Admire Ministries. God is not going to look for those. The Bible says you shall stand as an individual before the throne of grace and you shall give an account of what you did in this world. Remind them that there is a day that is coming. Remind them that on that day you shall stand alone. You are not going to stand as an assistant pastor. Remind them you are not going to stand as a prophet. You are not going to stand as an apostle. Remind them you are not going to stand as a bishop. Remind them on that day you shall stand as an individual. And you shall give an account of everything that you did in this world. Remind them that on that day the Lord shall begin to ask you. I gave you an assignment. The only assignment that I gave to you is the assignment according to John chapter 24 when the Bible says and Jesus said to Peter, Peter if you love me feed my flock. Remind them that on that day Jesus is going to ask, did you feed my flock or you exploited my flock? Remind them that it's about feeding the flock not about exploiting the flock. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I heard his voice clearly speaking and saying, remind them. Remind them that during the 1900, 1901, 1906, there was a revival that was spearheaded by a man, William J. Seymour, which is uh, called the Azusa Revival. Remind them that during that revival, there was no state managing of miracles. There was no state managing of prophecies. Remind them. Remind them about the move of the Holy Ghost. Remind them about the days of Benson Itahusa, the men who walked with God. Remind them about the days of Catherine Kuhlman when the real power of God was still tangible. Remind them about the days of uh, the late Babungidi. Remind them about the days of the late NJC Tolle. They were preaching the gospel without compromising. It's either you are in or you are out. There is no gray area. You cannot stand in between. Make up your mind today. Are you in or you are out? Remind them of the days of uh, the late Babu Bengu who were preaching the gospel. He came with what is called the Back to God revival. They were filling tents. They were doing crusades and revivals. It was not about collecting offerings and pledges. Remind them it was not about collecting tithes. Remind them it was not about collecting seeds and selling oil and selling salt and selling water. Remind them it was about saving souls. After every revival, remind them that there was an altar call that they used to call and calling everybody back to Jesus come to Jesus because he saves that is why today I'm not here to tell you about J Israel 
because J. Israel is just a mere human being. He can die even tomorrow. Ah, yeah, yeah. Remind them about Hari and Krishna. They came and they introduced what they introduced, but they died. Remind them. Remind them. Remind them. There is a day that is coming, which is the day of the Lord, when Jesus shall come, when he shall come for his bride. His bride must be prepared and his bride must be ready. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right here. I remember yesterday I was preaching somewhere. I was preaching here in Cape Town in Strand and I say, every year at our home, at our house, every year, whenever, whenever it was Christmas time, my mother used to prepare us from the 24th, from the 23rd, 24th, preparing us for the 25th. Now we used to do what is called a spring cleaning. A spring cleaning that we used to do where it was a situation where we used to move the couches, we move the carpet, we sweep under the carpet, we sweep under the under the couches, we sweep under the table, we get into the cupboard, we we we, we reach out to all the places that we've never reached out to before because we are expecting visitors. <laughs> We are expecting visitors. That is why there was a need for a spring cleaning. As I'm looking at the church today, Jesus Christ is standing where he is standing on the right hand of the Father and is looking at the church and asking himself, is this the reason why my blood was shed? There is a need for a spring cleaning in the church. The spring cleaning must begin within the building, not outside the building. Before we can go and win souls and bring visitors to the house of the Lord and bring uh, and, 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 and do revivals, winning souls, doing crusades, winning souls, there is a need for a spring cleaning within the church. You can love me or hate me, but there is a need for a spring cleaning. There is a need for a spring cleaning in the house of the Lord. Because in our time, the only person who is a sinner is the girl who gets pregnant. The only person who is a sinner is the one who gets caught sinning. But we have got professional sinners who are still in the house of the Lord. They know how to cover their sinfulness. And they know how to let everybody know about everybody else's sinfulness. There is a need for a spring cleaning in the house of the Lord. Until the church of God understands the principle of love then revival shall break forth and all the ends of the world shall receive this revival and everybody shall be saved I don't know if I'm talking to somebody right here I remember there was a time there was a time when I gave up on Christianity and I said to everybody I don't want to be a Christian anymore I don't want to be a preacher anymore you can keep you can keep your Christianity keep your preaching keep everything I don't want to be part of this anymore because in as much as I was trying so hard to do the right thing trying so hard because it gets so hard to serve Jesus it is not as easy as one two three it's not as easy as ABC it becomes so hard to serve Jesus in as much as I was trying to stand for the truth stand for what is right I was receiving attacks left, right and center. The same people who were claiming to be standing for the truth were the same people who were persecuting me day in and day out. Up to a point when I realized that it is useless to be a Christian. It is useless to serve God. It is useless to follow this path. Because of the level of hypocrisy that we have in this religion called Christianity. The same people that you are trying to show the truth, the same people that you are trying to open their eyes are the same people that will be throwing stones at you. You can never know that you are blind until your eyes are open. You can never know that you are blind until your eyes are wide open. My assignment is to open your eyes and remind you that back in those days there were crusades that they used to hold and during those crusades, witches and wizards used to give their lives to Christ. And whenever they come and kneel on the altar, they used to come and surrender all their, all their mutis and all their things they were using in their shrines. And we would go to the shrines and burn the shrines. I remember back in those days when I was young, before I was even born again. I used to attend to revivals and go to revivals and just sit at the back and ask myself what is going on here. 
But today in our time, the same witches and wizards who used to give their lives to Christ years ago, today they are recycling themselves and they are coming to stand on the altar with their witchcraft spirits. They are standing on the altar and preaching a different gospel and preaching a distorted gospel and preaching a gospel that has got nothing to do with Jesus Christ. The same witches and wizards today in our time we have got thousands and thousands of people going to gather just to receive certain things that they were giving back in those years. Today they have recycled them. If you remember during the crusades many, many years ago when people used to come and give their lives to Christ and kneel on the altar and give their life to Christ there are people who used to come with strings on their waists blue, white, yellow, red, black they would come and break the strings and leave them on the altar on their arms, on their wrists you would see some red and white strings and black strings they would come and drop them on the altar as a way of surrendering to our Lord Jesus Christ they would have the same strings on their feet and they would come and surrender them on the altar because when you come to Jesus, it's all about Jesus. The Bible says that the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. But today, the same things that they used to burn in the crusades many years ago have been recycled and brought back to church as wristbands. They are back again to the house of the Lord as wristbands. A wristband that is written, I am not afraid of the devil. I'm protected by the anointing of my father. That is nonsense. That is rubbish from the pit of hell. It is not the gospel. The same things they used to burn back in the years have been recycled and brought back to the church again. I will not keep quiet. I will continue to say it as it is. I will continue to deliver the truth without compromise. Take it or leave it. That's how we move. The same things that they used to have in the shrines have been brought back to the house of the Lord. Let me tell you, and I would say this for the very last time today. The Bible says the disciples were healing people. The shadow of the apostle was used to heal the sick. The Bible says the handkerchiefs were taken from the body of the apostle and were given to people so that people may be healed. There is no scripture where I saw where the Bible says and then the apostle was selling the handkerchiefs to the people so that the people may be healed. There is no verse in the Bible. The Bible says, are there any sick people in your midst? Take the oil and anoint them with the oil. Pray for them in the name of Jesus so that they may recover. There is no way in the Bible where it says take the oil and sell it to them. And then somebody will begin to say, but we use money to buy the oil and the bottles. And even to package the bottles, we use money. So stop packaging everything. Stop packaging the bottles. Stop packaging the salt. Stop packaging the water. Because there is nothing freely we have received. And freely we shall give. That is the gospel. That is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As I'm closing, I want you to know wherever you are watching from, it's all about Jesus and nothing else. This year, 22, 2022, we are calling upon the name of Jesus and we are saying Jesus or nothing. As you're watching, wherever you are watching from, according to the scriptures, at the mention of the name of Jesus, everything is possible. Are you sick as you're watching me? Any infirmity on your body? Any problem you're facing? At the mention of the name of Jesus. May God touch you. May God touch you tonight. In the name of Jesus. If you're watching this right now. And you're saying, man of God, I have heard your word. I'm here to tell you about a man called Jesus, the man who saves, the man who heals, the man who heals any disease, the man who saves any soul. My kind of gospel is very simple and straightforward. Come as you are. It doesn't matter about your sinfulness or sinful nature or whatever it is. Come as you are. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, you were not there, but he had you in his mind. 
it, when Jesus was crucified in Calvary about 2,000 years ago, you were not there with him, but he had you in his mind. Jesus knew that 2,000 years later, there is a young man who's going to struggle with addiction. Jesus knew that more than 2,000 years later, there is a young man who's going to struggle with drugs. There is a young man who's going to struggle with addiction. There is a young man who's going to struggle. When Jesus hanged on the cross, he was not gay, but they crucified him as if he was gay. He was not an armed robber, but he died the death of an armed robber. He was not a prostitute, but he died the death of a prostitute because he took it upon himself. He took it upon himself. Whatever sinfulness that you can think about, what it is, what is it that you think is the worst sin that you have ever committed under the sun? Jesus says, come as you are. Jesus died the death of a murderer in as much as he was not a murderer. He died the death of a murderer because he knew that many, many years to come, there is a young man who's going to struggle. Come as you are. I'm calling you to Jesus, the man who saves. I'm not calling you to a religion called Christianity. I'm not calling you to a place of religion. I'm, I'm calling you to a place of relationship. Come and have a relationship with God. Come and have a relationship with God. For Christianity is a cult. A cult that was founded by men. But relationship with God has got nothing to do with a building. It has got nothing to do with a pastor, a prophet, an apostle. It's a personal relationship between yourself and your Father God in heaven. When God sent his son Jesus, he wanted to bring you back to Eden. Where the Bible says one day God came and he asked a question. He said, Adam, Adam, where are you? Because God and Adam, they had direct communication. They would speak one-on-one. -on -one. God is calling you back to that relationship. Where you don't need a one-on-one -on -one with a prophet to hear what God is saying about your life. Where you don't need to pay any false prophet, any fake prophet, any amount of money so that you, need, you can hear about your life. God is calling you to a place of relationship. If you're watching me now and you're saying, man of God, I want to be in this relationship with this God. Just lift up your hands where you are and say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe in my heart that I'm a sinner. I have sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I have sinned, Lord, and I've fallen short. But I know that you are the King of Kings. I know that you are the King of glory. And I know that you will change my life. Thank you, Jesus. Purify me. And purify my heart. Let me be white as snow. After today, you devil and your accomplices, I shall no longer take part in anything that involves you. If you have prayed this prayer, shout a very big amen at the top, top of your voice and say, Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Uncle Siam. If you have prayed this prayer, just know that after today, your life will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Utandolwapho <laughs> Como yo duele Utando luapo 
Hallelujah, Gengama Baba Lungi Koba Matambo Gipele Nya Lungi Yenile Kaye Pela Yeso Tanjweni Namoyo Salungi Fundi Suguti Mayense Intando Yako Salungi Fundi Suguti Yuna Mayense Inta do yako em sabeni nasema zuli o mayense inta do yako gu kogonke esi dula gu ko. You know my answer. In the doya ko, gu kogo ke esi zula gu ko. You know my answer. In the doya ko. When I chase you, pagame, I get your fun and love. You're not my answer. In the dark, when I chase you, pagame, I get your fun and love. My answer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just take it, Lord. If you were blessed by this broadcast and you were blessed by this message and you are saying this is the gospel and you are saying this is undiluted this is not perverted and you'd like to be part of the back to Christ movement when we say back to Christ we are simply saying back to the basics we are simply saying let's go back to the basics back to, back to the days when we used to hold all night prayers as young people just to worship God back to the basics where we used to pray as young people coming together not to gossip but to pray we are simply saying let us go to the basics where we had not yet merchandised the gospel where we were not preaching the perverted gospel we are simply saying, let us go back to the basics where it's either you give me Jesus or nothing. I don't need any water. I don't need any oil. I don't need any salt. I don't need anything. I don't need any wristband. I don't need any anointed material. The only thing I need is Jesus. As the Back to Christ movement, we are saying, let us go back to the beginning. Let us go back to the beginning where we used to call upon the name of Jesus only and nothing else. Let's go back to the basics and go back to the beginning before church turned into a business. Let's go back to the beginning, go back to the basics before church turned into a business center, a place of enterprise. Let us go back to the beginning where we used to have children of God coming to church, not customers coming to a business center. Let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the basics where we used to worship God in spirit and in truth. Back to the basics when it was all about Jesus and nothing else. 
Back to the basics where we used to take salvation so serious. Back to the basics where we are, where we were not too familiar with God. Back to the basics. Back to the cross. Back to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're saying, men of God, I've been blessed by your words. I've been blessed. I want you to reach out to me on the number that is showing on the screen right now. Reach out to me. This is my personal number. Reach out to me. Let us talk. Any city you are, we are bringing the revival to your city. We are bringing the revival to your city. Already I'm here in Cape Town and great things are happening. Great things are still going to happen. We are taking it back to the basics. We are taking it back to the beginning. Back to where we used to be. Back to where we used to be. Back in the days before we had celebrities mounting the altar to come and showcase their clothes, showcase their suits. Back to the basics where we used to have men of God coming to deliver the word of God without diluting it and shifting and twisting it to suit their personal needs. Let us go back to the basics. Get in touch with me on the number that you're seeing on the screen. That's my personal number. Let us go back to the basics. Let's go back to the basics. I know a lot has happened ever since we started the Back to Christ movement. There are so many people who were delivered, so many souls who were saved, and many people came up with questions. Because a lot was happening. It's not easy. It's not an easy road. It has not been an easy journey. It has been a challenging one. But I thank God that in 2022, I'm still standing and I'm calling upon the name of Jesus and I'm saying Jesus or nothing. I'm saying Jesus or nothing. I love you all with the love of God and I want you to reach out to me. Let us join our hands together as the Back to Christ movement. This is a movement that is going to shake the world, that is going to shake nations. Nations will come back to Christ. Nations will come back to Christ. Many people say, oh, you are saying back to Christ, where were you? You are saying back to Christ. Back to Christ is all about going back to the basics. That's all you need to know. And after all is said and done, the theme scripture for the back to Christ movement is Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. For now seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If you seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness all the things you require shall be added unto you the blessings that you are crying for are not blessings they are additional things that you are supposed to receive after you seek the kingdom of God they are not blessings at all driving a car is not a blessing owning a house is not a blessing oh yes because if we have to use that to determine whether somebody is blessed or not, then that means we have got more blessed people in the world than in the church. The real blessing of God is the gift of salvation that is given to you by God through His Son, Jesus Christ. By the shedding of the blood, you receive the gift of salvation. And by you being saved, you are now in Christ and all these things are left behind. You are now a new creation. You are now seated. Right hand off. The Father, you are holy. Holy, you are holy. You are holy. Holy, you are holy. Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy. Holy, you. all about the gospel that's all about Jesus I want you to get in touch with me use the number that you see down there and get in touch let us take this gospel to all the ends of the world so that the end may come my name is Jay Israel and I hope you were blessed with that being said I want you to have a blessed night until we meet again 
in our next lounge service from the comfort of my lounge to the comfort of your lounge this is Jay Israel with the Back to Christ movement we say Aluta Continua Shalom <laughs>